Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Feed Your Soul, brought to you by Aish. We are going to smile. We are going to celebrate love. We're going to celebrate peace. We're going to celebrate each other, people, and challah this week. I've got a lot to say about the situation. I don't know if a lot, but I definitely have what to say. I think I'm going to save it for the end of the show this week because my guest has been preparing and she's excited and I'm excited to have her. And I'd love to get right to the cooking. But first and foremost, I must always ask, where are you watching from? Say, hey, tell us where you're watching from. I want only love and positive comments and good vibes, guys. There's enough negativity out here going on on social media, online, in the digital world right now. Right now we ain't having none of that. That's all I'm saying. And then we'll talk more at the end of the show. Okay. So today's guest, this is really exciting. Mandy Silverman founded Mandy Licious in 2013 in Sharon, Massachusetts, and has since built a worldwide following, having created over 300 unique Hala and babka recipes. Like, whoa. 300 is quite the accomplishment. In addition to selling challah and teaching classes, she loves sharing her recipes and tips and supporting others who want to make their own challah. Follow her on Instagram at Mandylicious Challah and watch her make a unique creation she created exclusively for us today. Welcome, Mandy, to the show. Yay. Hello. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. I will try and rein in the joy. But don't Why worry. don't rein it in, Mandy? <laughs> There's lots of things that are bringing us down in the world today. There, let's do. Let's be the people that are bringing joy to the internet right now. Okay, so don't rein it in. You are a bundle of energy. <laughs> I can't believe, by the way, I just learned you're only five feet tall. Like I'm stunned. <laughs> yes, it's all very compact. I'm, I'm yeah. fun sized. You know. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Let's go. <laughs> Has this always been the case? Because I feel like this was news to me, and I'm I'm really freaking out about this. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always been a bundle of energy. I've always been five feet tall. I've actually been always, shorter than five correct, feet tall. Correct. Correct. <laughs> you have been shorter. This is right. You're, you know, recent development, short, not recent, recent, but whenever. What did I actually stopped growing when I was like 13? How about you? I stopped growing mostly like before I was like 15 or 16, but then grew another inch in college. I hear that. Really? I, I hear that. It's so funny. So that happened to you? Yeah. My daughter's like, oh no, I'm just five feet tall. I'm like, you might make it. One more inch. Don't give up. But it also has a lot of all this going. So <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, you are personality plus. You're a Kala extraordinaire guru carbologist. Mandy, talk. Let's. We have so much to talk about, but let's get baking first. What are you making today? Today I am going to do um, a Middle Eastern monkey bread because monkey bread I loved because I love monkeys in general, but monkey. <laughs> And I was very confused when I learned what monkey bread was because it, in fact, does not contain any monkeys, which, right. was, which, was, which, was also, which was happy, I guess. But there's also no bananas in it. I wasn't quite sure what the relationship right. was. But monkey bread is so fun. And obviously, I love anything with bread. But monkey bread is, in general, sweet, right? It's covered in sugar and cinnamon. And then there's like a caramely sauce that goes on oh, top. And it's so yeah. delicious. It's wonderful. But by the time you would serve that, like in a meal, you want to share it with your friends. It's always like, okay, I'm, I can't eat an entire loaf of bread. That's why hal is good because it gets you at the beginning yeah. when you're the most hungry. Correct, you know, correct, it's correct. Hard, it's a hard one to go. So um, there are savory monkey breads out there, but um, turning challah dough into all sorts of wonderful things is what I love yeah. to do because I know that dough, bread, things that have yeast in general are stressful for people yeah. to create. And once they get something that they're comfortable with, <laughs> it's really great just to be able to utilize that in other totally. things. So um, it's so kind and sensitive of you of you. And I completely, completely agree. If you're going to go to the trouble of making challah, perfecting challah, getting comfortable with it, then at that point, turn it into everything. And I have gone also sweet and savory. I actually have a new video coming out with 10 different things to do with your challah dough. And so you and I are kindred spirits in that manner. So talk about like you make the dough and then how do you turn this into monkey bread? Okay. So this is just Instead of using like dipping it into butter, we're going to take these small pieces, these little nubbins that we're going to um, create in a minute, um, and we're going to dip them in olive oil, and then we're going to put them in a variety of spices. I've got, um, they're beautiful, by the way, gorgeous. Aww. They're just like stunning. I want to set the whole collection and make like a wall of spices. But um, oh, Mandy, I will remember that and expect a picture, by the way. Just <laughs> I feel like, don't you, like there's spice cabinets, but this is like, this needs like a yeah. spice cabinet. You know, like they're beautiful. They're beautiful. So, Thank you. Uh, so, and you can use whatever spices you like. There's so many fun, especially that's like they're making a comeback. These, um, yes. Spices. 
like the um, like this sumac is all of a sudden very popular. You see um, shawarma spices, all these things that are already made up, and you can use anything you want. I like to limit it to like three or four okay. because otherwise you want to have a marriage of flavors. You don't want to have a battle, right? So oh. if you do too many, you're gonna yeah. be like, "There's that flavor. There's that flavor," as opposed to. And that's the sound. We're all about harmony. That is the theme yes. of the show today. No, no war, no anger, no battle. Harmony. Okay, let's do yeah. it. So yes, and you have your za'atar. So I'm gonna use za'atar and sumac and harissa. Now, if you don't, I'm, this is a beautiful. I love red and the color that it creates. Me too. But if you don't like anything spicy, you can also mix it with a little paprika or just use paprika in general. There's all nice. sorts strengths of flavor that you can use. Um, so don't feel like these are the ones that you have to, but these just look good together, they taste great. And at the end, you'll be able to dip them in a variety of dips, which is sometimes you can't do with a sweet one. It doesn't mean yeah. it's delicious, but you can't really dip it in hummus, which is okay. what I like to do. So Correct, I hear that. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna just get myself okay. all ready. We were talking, we were ha I was having a dilemma before the show, I'm like hair up, hair down, but I also, when I cook, it's like, it's gotta be off my face, totally. Then I would, you just would see all the hair and all the things. <laughs> so now, challah dough, when you use it as, as a monkey bread, it's a little heavier than a lot of the doughs sometimes that you do use for, like, a, they, sometimes they use, like, biscuit dough or lighter yeah. dough. So challah dough, when you're trying to create it into a monkey bread, you have to watch out that it's not too heavy and that the pieces are going to grow together. Um, so, Ooh, okay. so to do that, I always want to make sure that the pieces aren't too big and not too small. And I don't want to, normally, you're always talking about, let's roll the things in flour, let's make them not too sticky. We sort of want to make sure that the dough is a little sticky. So we're going to be using uh, a dough knife for okay. Okay. I love this to cut the pieces so we don't have to handle them. You can also just use a regular knife, but as little okay. hand touching as possible because you don't want to make the dough too smooth. Um, and yeah. then I have all of my spices and different bowls to make sure that we um, each one gets its own moment in the spotlight. Okay. So um, I'm going to do a, this is a quarter cup or so of olive oil. This is what we're I love the olive oil, such a perfect complement to these Middle Eastern spices. I love that. This is going to be great. This is great. And then now all different spices that you use, there's going to be different like um, thicknesses. So like if you use just paprika, it's going to be very thin. You might not need as much of it. But something okay. like atar has all the beautiful seeds and all the texture. So yes. you might use a little bit more, but around four to six tablespoons or so of each great. of spices to dip your Excellent. little food. Excellent. Do that, and then if you need more, you just go along the way. Obviously, can add more. So sure. Have I didn't even know. So I just want to give. Yeah, I want to give people like a little background here. So zatar, this zatar, um, you can get it on Amazon. Jamie Geller spices. Jamie Geller zatar. Just search for it. And it's um from the north here in Israel. It's a a lot of the zatars that you'll find, Mandy, commercially right now are like mixtures of like oregano, parsley, um, sesame seeds. This is actual hyssop. It's a biblical herb that's indigenous here to the land. It's referenced in the Bible. And so this is the most authentic za'atar that you'll actually get. I think it's the best in the world. Sumac is a berry, very citrusy and very bright. And then the harissa is a great uh, combination of Tunisian chili peppers and sweet paprika and in there and some sea salt. It smells so good right now. It's like, yay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to sit too hard because then like you'll suck up the spices. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And now we're talking about um, and then for monkey bread in general, you make them in a bunt pan. Yeah. Um, you can also use a little pan if you want. The scariest part if you make it in a bunt pan is always um, the turning it out at the end. So yes, yes. So like, just, I, it's always like, oh, we don't have to worry about braiding. It's easy. But then you make it and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, how is it going to come out? Yeah. You just have to just go crazy with your um, okay. spray, but I prefer honestly using um, either with oil and flour or um, one of the sprays that have flour in, in it already. Yeah. It's such okay. a big difference and just go crazy with the spray. I actually save the spray right now. So we can just, it's like we just want to make sure it doesn't stick. All okay. right. Now, so like be generous is what you're saying. Yeah, because you know, it's yeah. just not worth it. But to be fair, right. Does break apart at the end. You just have lovely little dinner rolls, which is also fun. So no, yes. at the end they're all going to be delicious. Now you right, we're going to make every situation work for us. Like whatever happens, it's going to be good. For you. It Look, it's, that's like you know, like when you burn something, it's like flambe. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Or when it falls apart, I call it deconstructed. You know, like totally. <laughs> like sushi was invented by someone who totally forgot to turn their oven on. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, totally. Fancy. <laughs> 
Yeah, you have the option now of using your whole, I, I have a three pound recipe, so that's like about two full size collars. You can certainly, okay. if you have a big enough bunt pan, make one big um, okay. monkey bread or gorilla monkey bread <laughs> if it's a really big. Okay. Or if you don't want to have that many people, you can certainly just use half. The most important okay. thing is you want to also, there's like so many most important things. Another important thing to worry right. about. How basically big. everyone should be taking notes. This is like a major. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Go and I will be sending out a test after. <laughs> totally. So there will not be a curve. So if you just don't do well, you'll have to come back and make more challah. Okay. All right. So well, um, your classes, Mandy, you do yeah. give challah classes. So that okay, yeah. guys. So if you want to really perfect and you want to learn how to make this incredible dough, because obviously half of the secret is in the dough itself, Mandy. After, yeah. You know, if you don't have a good dough, that's like the starting point. So Mandy has incredible classes, and you've got like a rainbow licious class coming up too, correct? That's right. It's next. It's actually a week from today. It's so it's, everyone always asks. I I do a lot of like serious challahs, you know, serious flavors, but I also go, you know, I made a baby Yoda challah. <laughs> I made you know, a cupcake batter challah. I do all these fun colors, and uh, sometimes everyone everyone wants to have fun with the colors, so it's important mm. to know how to do it. So I always like to do the rainbow class. Is always a hit because I show you how to make dough into a rainbow, but also how to use just sprinkles to make your dough like a unicorn, which is super fun. Yeah. First of all, I love that. There's all like good vibes, rainbows, unicorns. It's just so, you know, fantastical. And I love that basically you're classifying a monkey bread, a Middle Eastern monkey bread with three different spices, swirled with tahina and a centerpiece of hummus. That's a serious? Like, is this one of your serious creations? Or by, uh, by you know, savory? Like, where does this one classify fall into your classification? I'll call this a gateway challah. You know, it's like Ooh. we're not quite all the way there. Like when I first started making, putting things in challah, like um, like a salami challah was like my first thing that I ever made. Um, like to, that was not a standard challah. And there was always like some people were like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. I want to have all the stuffed challahs. <laughs> and then there was another um, person that was like, this is a horrible idea. And your bubby will be turning over her grave if you saw that. Yeah. So, Sometimes, yeah. like, it's, that's the whole reason you always started because everyone wants to feel comfortable with their own level of challahing. So yeah, I, I was told that the first time we brought like sushi to the table for Shabbat as opposed to gefilte fish, it's like all the bubbies were turning over. They were just rolling around. Yep. <laughs> I one time made chicken and dumplings for my family instead of like the regular chicken soup, and they were just like, no, I'm sorry, right. I have the standard um, Shabbat soup. All right, that's fine. yeah. Like Mandy, we have a lot of comments. So Adam Bradley, our producer, is gonna just throw them up. If people want to say hey, tell us where they're watching from. If you have questions for Mandy, don't be shy. Hi Rana, how are you? I actually I don't know if it's Rana or Rona, but you're here every week and you're amazing. So if your next comment, if you could tell me. Um, hello there. We have people watching from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mandy. Like an international Middle Eastern call of spices being watched from the Bahamas, being made from that's like amazing. Um, and Lillian, hi there in Frankfurt. How are you? I love all the love. You can send love. Shalom from the five towns. Okay, Elaine, you're so boring. Only in the five towns. No, I'm just joking, <laughs> Elaine. You know, I love you. Hey there, olives and sweets. Hi from NYC. Okay, I hope that we're bringing some brightness and some light and some happiness. And we'll call this baking therapy for everything that's going on. Hi, Liz in Italy. How are you, my love? Wow, Mandy. Okay, Mandy is, you call these nubs, Mandy? Is that like an official baking term? No, we'll call them nubbins. Um, yes. Nubbins. <laughs> They're little pieces. You don't want them to be too tiny, especially if you're using a more powerful seasoning. Like if you're using like shawarma seasoning and you have a yeah. bunch of teeny, tiny shawarma coated nub, like big bites, you'll be like, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want that. So you, but also with the dough, like I said, is heavy. So you have to be careful not to make them too big. So you want to okay. have at least like forty or fifty. Um, if okay. You're, uh, Ooh. Yeah, like a lot of little ones, but not like chunks. So these are, you can see I've got. And like, how many people would this feed? Because there's no way this is feeding forty or fifty. Like I want half, and right. then, you know, so it would, it would probably feed the both of us. You know, if we were a little. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> this is the equivalent of two. If you make a, a big gorilla monkey bread, then you'll yeah. have the equivalent of um, like two, two whole. Uh, so if you're having okay, a big people are trying to have company again, this is a great way to everyone have their own piece and on their own flavor that they're like, oh, I want, I want all the sumac flavored ones, and I want all the zaatar. You can use beautiful uh, coriander, cumin. Those are also all oh, wonderful. Stunning. I love that. I love that. So I'm gonna just stop with all of my nubbin right here, so we can move. Okay. Along. The, um, is nubbing, is that a verb? Like it's real? Like Yes, and it's also a workout, so I might just put that on my Apple Watch. And make it 
as a workout for today because I was gonna say, how do you look so good and cute with all the carbs that you make, Mandy? Do you exercise? I, I do exercise. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> but it's mostly just the kneading is like a very we I Danny, my husband and I we, we teach a lot of classes and we always we have a dream to teach a class called um Chalatis, which would be like the the art of kala exercise where you're like focus your core, knead the dough, you can do it, work through. I feel like there's genius. Like Good work. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like that's the one only exercise that I've actually kept up in this last year is my Pilates. Everything else fell to the wayside. Well, so um, yeah, yeah. If you need, do you ever know like when the instructors do the courses and then they have their like model students behind them who are demoing all the steps? So if you need yeah. someone to be your Pilates backup, I'm your girl. Yeah, they'd be eating the chal in the background. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, I'm the no, best one. For that. Oh, I'm very yeah. excited for this plan. It's gonna yeah. be great. okay. All right, so. I don't know if anyone has ever fried anything before or made like a like dip something in like egg or oil and then a coating. But there's always like this idea of having a dry hand and a wet hand. So you don't yes everything all Mandy. yes. So this idea we want to carry over to our monkey bread. Um, and okay. how I didn't roll them. They're sort of they're still in their nubbiny form. Yeah. And I'm going to take um one hand and I'm going to um, let me see, I gotta decide which hand's gonna be which, but I'm gonna take one hand and I'm going to just put a little bit of olive oil on it. Just a little, and then you pick us whatever spice you want. So I'll start with um, sumac as my main spice, right there. All right, cool. and that's it. And then you just—that's the sound you have to make with every piece, just so you know. Okay, <laughs> fifty times. Okay. It, you know, again, that's part of your facial workout, so you'll have a nice glow mm. at the end. I cannot tell you how guilty I feel for not doing the facial workout. Like I think the first time I saw somebody doing, I think it was Megan. Um, Princess Meghan oh, Markle, yes. and I was like, hey, maybe it's just for princesses. And then it was like, everyone is doing it, and everyone on social media. And then they had that special tool, and I'm just like, am I? I feel my face sagging just while I'm watching them do that. <laughs> so now you're telling me I can also do my facial exercises while right. I'm making monkey. It's like, yeah. Mansy, yes, for you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling good today. I'm feeling good. You're gonna be just hope. Thing after this, this is amazing. How do you make that sound though, Mandy? Well, you know, we gotta make like your angry face, mm -hmm. and but really bring it happiness, so, and it just falls out. You can try. Everyone. Okay, I, I just <laughs> tried. Nothing came out, but I also can't whistle, so it may be you know part have something to do with it. I can't snap I, either, Mandy. I cannot snap or whistle. I can oh, whistle, but I inhale. Sometimes, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> but I can do this. This is my skill, and okay, you know, okay. I can. What other things can I, I feel like I can um, braid challah with my eyes closed. Okay. Oh, well, that's probably a good skill too to have. Okay, excellent. So you're dropping in. So Mandy, while you do this, I'd love to talk about like where your love from challah for challah came from. Like it's interesting to have this very specific passion. Right. No, it's true. It's because of challah. I did, um, I, when I got married, I, I didn't really know how to bake so much, but as we know, we were married longer, I bake more and more. But challah was one thing that I did not do because it's scary, right? It's like there's a lot of stress there, right? Because if you mess up the yeast, it's like you, you killed the yeah. yeast. I don't go yeah. try not to murder things on a regular basis. Yeah, no problem. yeah that's a good practice, yeah. definitely. Then, do you use fresh or dry, Mandy? I use instant, which has been instant, a, instant okay. yeast is a yeast that I recommend for everybody because it's like you can't mess it up. You just you don't have to proof it, which is scary because if your okay. water's too hot, it could kill it. So this was also when I was trying to make um, Shabbos, it was never something that I would do because I would, I always thought it had to be like a certain way, right? Your challah has to look like this. And if the right. breaks aren't intertwined perfectly, then you just you put shame to the Jewish people and just don't. So I was like so scared to even do it. Yeah. Well, but it's intimidating. It's so and like I was like like making like arancini and I was like no, but challah is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so funny because I yeah. still have not made arancini. So okay, very interesting. Well, that'll be another class because that is delicious. We do all sorts of fun flavors. Um, oh, Ki uh, Kira, by the way, says we're two of her favorites. So Kira, then you're our favorite. We love you back, girl. Congratulations. Yes. You have excellent taste in humans. <laughs> Okay, Mandy, so you were saying, so you were intimidated. Yes, and then I, um, my mom, who I love, to the moon and back, she called me after Rosh Hashanah one time and said she had an awesome Rosh Hashanah meal somewhere, and the woman had made challah that had like a layer of honey inside of the challah, 
Yeah. And sliced it open, the honey sort of came out. And my mom thought it was super cool. And she said, how do you make this? And the woman's like, mm, I don't share my secrets. I don't tell people how I do this. And like, there, there, are are those. there are those people that don't do it. And you know, you got to respect all that. So, but my mom called and she shares, she just, like, if she could, like, remove a kidney and, like, just hand it to you, like, she won't oh. even advice. She's like, here Mandy, you go. I, yes, <laughs> literally, I said, my mom, it's like the clothes off her back. I'm like, mom, we're in the street. You cannot get undressed here. Like, so, like <laughs> cool, totally with you. Yes. <laughs> it's wonderful, but it's also like, yeah. Just come on. Yeah, <laughs> darling. <laughs> Like she lives in St. Louis and I'm in um, Massachusetts. So yeah. it's like, I can't do, I can't help her as much as I want. Like my brother and sister with her, they can always help her out. I can't. Yeah. And when she called me up, she was like, oh, I really wish I knew how to, to do this. I was like, you know what, mommy, for you, I will figure this out. Which it, it, I didn't, it was quite the promise that I probably should have thought twice about because I never even made regular follow, let alone trying to figure out how to stuff a follow with yeah. honey, which turns out to be, very complicated. Um, it's not like the most obvious thing, which is probably why it was so special. So, yeah. she, um, so, but then, so I did all this research and I looked at all these books and all these things. Kala stuffing wasn't really even a thing so much. Like, um, this was eight years ago. So it's it was funny because now it's like, you yeah. know, who makes playing Kala? It's like, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> you know, it has to be stuffed. It has to be swirled. It has to be chopped. It has to have special dips. It's like, you yeah. know, but that is funny that it's, I guess, more of a more recent, like in the later part of the last decade, you know, that that became more trendy. It was the last seven years or so. Yeah. So the, um, they, so I did, I, I practiced, but I kept messing up. So how it's like when you make cookies, like if you messed up, you know, within like a half hour, if you mess them up, it's yes. oh, oh it dries enough. Oh, it, it was taking me weeks and so much flour and dough. I, I made every mistake just trying to learn how to make the dough itself like it wasn't right. like this, and then the honey was it was pouring out and then it was burning and i was so when you try to i'm not like i don't want to brag but i'm not like so good at everything but the things that i do i generally try and do them well at least after the first yeah, yeah. and it was so it's like it crushed me i i couldn't do it I, I couldn't make one more mistake i was like okay i think i've got the challah dough down now right. and I'm going to let me just see if I can stuff something else fun in it. Like what could else could you, what else goes with bread? Like, oh we have salami, I'll make a salami stuffed challah. And you know what? It yeah. totally worked. It was awesome. Mandy, I <laughs> knew was, I had faith in you the whole time, by the way. Just saying. Uh, I'm glad yes. that you did Mandy didn't <laughs> Mandy, yeah. was like, oh, this is it. And I, but I so we often, by the way, don't believe in ourselves. That's like a thing, right? You know, and um, everyone else around us, when we finally do succeed, like, I'm not surprised. We knew you could do it. But our, when we're in it, it's so hard to imagine that, you know, we're going to get through something that's challenging. So mm -hmm. I love that you persevered. And the salami challah was a hit. So then what happens? And then, so then I started like, okay. It felt good. It made me people so happy that it, it felt good, and I wanted to do more and more. So I would like yeah. people's like things that they really like. Like Danny loves buffalo chicken, so I made him a pulled buffalo chicken stuffed challah. And my friend yeah. Rebecca, she loves like Indian spiced things, so I made her an Indian spice like halu naan type. Um, right. Beautiful. Like all these things where I was like making personalized challahs for people, so that they just that made me happy that made them happy it's like all like other they say what's and vicky's happy too her comment just went up she said she absolutely loves what we're doing with the kala for <laughs> anyone who's tuning in now we're making middle eastern kala monkey bread chopped with zatar sumac and harissa it's my spice line you can go get it at amazon sorry shameless plug and we're here with mandy licious and she gives kala classes uh mandy class mandy's classes are so fun and highly recommended michelle grocer says <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so yay. Um, so Mandy, so you got fans in the audience here watching and Deborah Bookman is saying, Yay, Mandy. So got all the whole cheerleading <laughs> section is here. The home team is in town. Um, and so and so then Mandy, so what happens next? So then Buffalo chicken kala, Indian kala. It was like, a, it just became like, there were so many flavors in it and people started requesting them for birthdays. And every time I would come to their houses and it's at some point, eventually it became um, like, you have to make a business. You had to, for someone who was just doing it just to make literally just to make people happy. It was strange to do something that was not along like, the, like a businessy, like kick it up yeah. enough, but enough people said to do it. So I made it, I said one month I'm going to have, I'm just going to make like 20 challahs 
and that's going to be it for the whole month. I'll offer two flavors and I'll try it. And it went well. It was okay. I was like, okay, everyone bought it. They liked it. I was scared. The next month, it was November 2013, was um, that year that it was Hanukkah and Thanksgiving at the same time. The Thanksgiving. Yeah. Everyone was like, yeah. oh my gosh, it's yeah. never going to happen again yeah. for the rest of eternity. So I totally. thought it would be for fun if I like made a challah like, to celebrate like the Judaism and the Hanukkahs that was related to Thanksgiving. So I made um, a turkey shaped challah with like a pumpkin oh, tummy and I used like sprinkles for the beak and more sprinkles for the waddle, a little chocolate. It was adorable. All right, I took right. a picture of it and I put it on my Facebook. I didn't even have like a hundred crazy people on my Facebook at the time. And it people started coming from all over the place just to get it. So that was a really big, you know, mandelicious boost. Like people drove because I can't really, you know, get far away. It was just me in my kitchen. Yeah, so yeah. Maryland and New Hampshire and like it was like they came wow, to their little church, which was soup. That was like, whoa, look at me. That was so like I, that was a really exciting thing for me. Um, and then it was like months and months like that. I was just doing this and then people just kept saying you should go on Instagram because this is like this is people see pictures and it might be good for your business. So I actually couldn't figure out Instagram just like I currently <laughs> figure out TikTok. But um, I had one of my friend's daughter. She like made the account for me and she's like, here you go, Mandy. Now go ahead and be on Instagram. Yeah. And when I started on Instagram, I realized like I was getting met. It's just a different reach. It wasn't like my business. It was people from all over the world. Were start they saw yeah. that I was doing different things with Hala and they were like, I can't even get my dough to rise or I can't. And they started mess messaging me. Well, Mandy, let's just tell me first before we keep going, where does this go in the oven for how long? Just so, so that we can keep things moving and talking oh, as well. I get very chatty. So we're, when you're done, actually I have a fast forward file. So you're going to layer all of your monkey okay. in here and then you'll okay. cover it with a towel. I'm going to wipe my hands on this towel. Okay, um, great. Do a second rise for like 20 okay. to 30 minutes. Just make sure okay. you're putting your monkey ball pieces in that you don't pack them too tight. So right, like, right. Um, to grow so a little room to grow okay right. great and i've got my future so now it's 30 minutes into the future amazing i All love right. it through the magic of television and then could you hold it up like a little to the camera i don't know the side camera the front camera whatever people can gorgeous and also the side camera put it a little lower yeah. there mandy in the side camera side yeah. camera <laughs> i can't figure out the cameras there we go great yeah all right Good. so Good. Now, it's beautiful as it all right, but now we're gonna just take it, we're gonna liciousify it. Okay. We're gonna take it one step further. I'm learning so many new words. So <laughs> nubbing, liciousifying. I, I don't want any of this to be in the next spelling bee though. I can't spell any of them for sure not. <laughs> I don't think there's any one way to spell. Um, yeah. so whenever, you know how when you make monkey bread, you pour that caramel sauce on Yes, top. yes, yes. So we're not carameling sauce today because it's that would be a that would be a war of flavors not a happy marriage so, exactly very yes, good yes, um yes. so I, i'm gonna take a little I'm a good student Mandy. I'm good. I, you know, I can yeah. help. you've done very well um, thank you words you're picking up you'll be before you know it like <laughs> wake up tomorrow i'm not like, sure about morning. that i feel okay oh, it's gonna be great okay okay Wait. okay I, okay okay so then this is the um a pound of it's a quarter and a half cup whatever some people like a lot of tahina some people like a little um this is tahina and then actually the secret that you always want to add a little bit of the to the tahina is a little salt half teaspoon of sea salt just mixed it I could not agree more. Yeah. It needs salt to have flavor to bring out its flavors. I love that. Yeah. And it also helps all the other spices because these spices are not salty. Yes. And yes. You want yes. A little burst of flavor. All right. Now this is the fun part. You sort of just mix that all up. What do you mean? Like I feel like we've been having fun all until now. <laughs> just start, yeah. This is the extra bonus fun part. Actually, this is like okay. the. And then you sort of just. This is a sound you can make also. Yeah, I don't know, Mandy. I'm um, having trouble with the sound I have, effects. Oh, I, I, I have so much. I see, I have faith in you. You had faith in me. Yes. <laughs> I have faith in you. All right. Okay. You cover this in the tahina. And if you want to be a little extra fancy, you can even just. I do. I knew, I could tell. You can just tuck yeah. it a little bit. Just like sort of go. Oh, the tuck. Little sleepy ballies. And yeah, it gets, the tahina can sort of reach other parts. Nestle in the crevices and make yeah. its way down. Beautiful. Just giving little kisses and touches to all the different bowls. Okay, I love this. Now, now it's ready to be baked. It's just okay. 
for around 30 minutes, 30 to 35. If you're using, if you're making a gorilla monkey bread, you might use yes. close to 35 minutes. If you're making baby monkey bread in a smaller bunt pan, then be prepared for it to come out a little sooner. But you'll see that okay. it's all golden. There's like no, right, so there's no test of doneness. So what's the visual test that you're looking for? That's a great question. Golden. It's going to look gold. You'll see that the pieces will look set because as they bake, even though they're completely coated with the spices right now for like the okay. color effect, they're right. um, stretch and grow. And you'll see, be able to see some of the dough underneath and it'll look set. Um, okay, so beautiful. Look at it, it'll look, um, actually, and then it'll look doughy and at the beginning and then it'll be set. Okay. Then, hold on. Okay, I can't wait. Now we've gone. Holding on, guys. If you have any questions for Manzi, or tell us where you're watching from. Just say, hey, give us a shout out, send some love. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I feel like we need a ta-da. Oh, we have people watching from Costa Rica. Hi, Beatrice. How are you? Very Beautiful. Good. Okay. Costa Rica. Okay. Yeah. So now you've made your monkey bread. It's You tucked it in with the tahina. You baked it for 30-ish minutes. It's cooled. Don't do it when it's warm. And then oh, yes. That's the one way to really – you must have patience, which I also am working on that. I'm not so good at it. But then you'll just rip it apart. Yeah, and it's fine. You can sort of just not turn it upside It'll down. It'll be deconstructed well. monkey bread then. You know what? Mm -hmm. Yes, which kind of sounds upsetting to the poor monkey. But that's okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> right. no, no real monkeys were used in the making of this monkey bread. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I thought that there was going to be like a um, banana. I'm really glad there's no banana. Sorry. So this this will be for pre preparation for a minute. But then you yeah, you guys said it. You're getting love from St. Louis, Mandy. Yay! From Bobby Jackie. Oh, Bobby, that's my mom. <laughs> I was wondering. I you know I didn't want to put you on the spot, but like my mom makes an appearance at every show, and I was like, "Where's your mama that you're talking about, Mandy?" So uh, you should have a lot of like nachos from Mandy. And there's my mom. My mom just popped up. So <laughs> the, the two moms have made us proud. Hi, mommy. I love you. Hi, Mandy's mommy. We love you. I do. This is awesome. Okay. Um, so now I prepared this, it's all cooled and you flip it upside. If you need to sometimes take a little knife or a little um, spatula to just make sure that you cleared the area and okay. then turn it upside down. Hopefully let's all use our, ta-da! Wow, Mandy, now stay, I want Adam Bradley, our producer, stay on that camera, stay on the overhead one second, Adam, so we can see, bring us there. Mandy, lift it toward the camera, can you see, yeah. Wow. Oh, okay, just the colors just became wow, Mandy. Like just like I need a more moment. I need one more moment, Mandy, for this. Like, <laughs> wow. Stunning, 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 Mandy. Stunning. Well, thank you. I'm so honored. I it's it's it, it, and it's delicious. But now, see, I don't like dead space. Oh, oh yeah. okay. I guess I don't know. I, I realized that there's a hole right here, and you can yeah. put something in the hole. So I just have a little container of like hummus or mabucha or whatever you like to dip your kala in. I love that. Stick it right Or Mandy, there. you could do like a fresh homemade tahina if you wanted yes. just to bring out the tahina that you haven't done. Mandy, I can't. Oh my gosh. Hello guys, I want, if you're watching here, I want you to say what you think. Oh, she's giving a little za'atar. She's pulling out the spices there in the middle. Oh, Mandy, I'm loving this. Tell us what you think. If this is probably one of the most unique Chala creations. And by the way, Mandy, I think almost everything has been done to Chala in the last seven years, ever since it was like, oh, a novel thing to stuff it with honey. But I had, I have never seen this. Have you ever done anything like this before? Like, where did the, where was this born, this idea? Um, I like monkeys. No, um, it's just- right, yeah, right. Well, we, did, so we did talk about that, but like, this is, I like, this is well. Like, it's just so fun, right? So anything that's fun, and I know like noticing flavors, like what people are enjoying around me is important. And I know like my son's farm was supposed to be in Israel this year. So I have all like the, like can't unfortunately do it. Oh, uh, Mandy, when, when was your son's farm supposed to be? Supposed to be, in, it is going to be hopefully in August, but it won't be yeah. in Israel. In Israel. Next okay. August. We, a had a, we had a Corona bar mitzvah last uh, November. Oh, and yeah. Um, yeah, so we, we made it, it was between lockdowns. So we were able to have it at the hotel and mm -hmm. with family, but like we're like in that same space of this, like you having a bar mitzvah and a happy occasion during this, these challenging times. Okay, Rana's asking, she's still afraid of challah dough prep. Can she cheat and make the monkey bread with like dinner rolls? Yeah, for sure. But don't be afraid of challah dough. If you have questions, you just send me a message and I'll help you walk through it because we're gonna, anyone should not be, that's my like whole motto. 
Is it? Hey guys, we're throwing up Mandy's Instagram at Mandy Licious Hala on Instagram right here. She also has a website, but really, Mandy, you literally are you answer all like Hala nine one one DM DMs. Yeah. That's all, you. So message Mandy. Day. She also gives classes all day and maybe all night, depending. You know, if she's you know rolling over. So one more <laughs> overhead, if we can, please, Adam. I'm talking to our producer with the hummus in there with the like. Because when you bring it closer, stunning. Oh, um, right. Mandy, yum, yeah. we're getting like, wow. <laughs> okay, okay. Mandy, now this is the part of the show where we get to grab, um, you can grab a glass of wine. I'm actually, I'm gonna tell people what I am enjoying. I'm having today, since Mandy was using all of my spices, which are available on Amazon, so you can check them out. I'm having my coffee, Hawaii coffee. Oh. So this is a special a spice, Hawaii for coffee. I'll, sh I'll show it to you here. This is cinnamon, cardamom, ginger, and cloves, Mandy. It's like a Middle Eastern chai spice. Um, very, very heavy on the ginger. It's the real stuff here, real ginger threads, by the way, and fibers in this. Um, this is something you wanna grind with your uh, coffee, um, coffee, with your coffee grounds, or you wanna uh, steep it and then strain it and then put it into your coffee. You can also bake with it, just like you would do a chai spice or pumpkin sp pie spice. And I have it with almond milk and a little little drizzle of Ceylon in my coffee, which is date honey. What are you drinking, Mandy? Well, I couldn't decide what I was going to be in the mood for. So, you know, just like I thought I had three different spices for my monkey breads, I thought I would have <laughs> different beverages, depending on what we're talking about next. But I have, you know, okay. the one. And I put some fruit, frozen fruit, like my friend Debbie taught me to do it. So it looks fancy from the occasion. Oh, like a little like sangria in so I love that. I've just got my, you know, my basic chamomile tea, just like beautiful. And then I love it too. Pouring water. Uh, for, okay, so I, I, I can't say I'm with you, but I got two. I got my right. water, which is always my coffee, and I also am a crazy tea drinker. I'll have like five cups of green tea a day and then sprinkle in between chamomile. Cause I do love the calming effect of chamomile. I think it's real. It like it, it really just smell right away. Yeah. It's so amazing. I, I can't have, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a little peppy. So me on coffee is just, <laughs> so you wouldn't have been able to focus. So I'm always needing a little bit of <laughs> just, the calming. I love that. So I love it. Every day is helpful. And it's always good to remember like to drink water. And sometimes you forget to drink water, but tea is always nice to have, I think. It's it's so nice, Mandy. So I love, we're gonna cycle through our drinks. Um, yeah. We've got a lot to talk about. I really wanna know, I hear you saying a lot how you just wanna make people happy. Um, and that has somehow the challah baking, somehow it's connected to that. This The show is called Feed Your Soul. We always talk about soulful, spiritual, you know, aspects of cooking and baking, what our passions lead us to. What Where do you think that comes from, that desire to just make people happy? And why is food such a powerful vehicle for doing that? Um, well, it's, I feel a lot of it comes just life. You know, you see so many, the more life you see, the more things you see that are not happy. And any time that you can insert yeah. joy into someone's life is always powerful. It's always like, I mean, I'm not for everybody, but for a lot of people, especially growing up with a woman like my mother, who is very like, like, she, like you know, taking the clothes off in the middle of the street type. Um, mm -hmm. She's actually done that once. No, don't, just kidding, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. No, but it's, those sorts of things are um, powerful. But then you sort of, for like Hala, for me personally, it was something that I was so afraid to do for so long. And it, it was growing up, my mother made beautiful Hala, and I was always intimidated to do it myself. So then being successful at something that you failed at also makes it closer to you. And then to take yeah. it further um, on Instagram, where I'm able, it's, Every, so like I think we kept counting once and I think we're like 71 countries we have people from all these countries that come wow. in, that Jewish or not Jewish observant or not observant all different levels coming and learning about something that I was so afraid of now that not only am I it's like an honor to be able to help people make something but also that people can feel comfortable talking to me knowing that I made every mistake that they make they never a mistake that you're going to make that I haven't made twice. right so right you right. feel comfortable and so that like sort of brings it all like like a sandwich right so there's all um, i do these classes and a lot of the time they ask where does like what is kala mean why do you have to do kala um why is it braided is the most popular question and just like every good jewish topic there's about 1.7 million answers so like yeah. do you want to give us one so my this is my favorite answer my favorite answer is like it's um like the past the present and the future all being interwoven through this 
this bread, right? And your past, really? <laughs> they're all the, it's, it's like, it gives me chills, right? It's the yeah. all, they're all coming together. So at any time that I make a challah and I've got my three strands, I'm thinking past, present, future, the past, watching my mother make it, the present, watching me, goodness gracious, I totally figured out how to make a challah. And then the future, right. all of these wonderful challah chefs that I've like, helped and get lucky enough to help. And future challah chefs, they're going to be brave enough um, to try to make challah for the first time, just knowing that you can totally do it. And it's not even anything to be stressed about. So every, so that, wow. It's really like for me so powerful, and also you're able when you're feeling comfortable with salad and the way that I personalized it for yourself. Because I, if you like, you know, like how Rebecca liked the Indian spiced potatoes, yeah, friend Debbie likes green goddess dressing, you know, those sorts of things. I was able to like combine them into a salad. Then, even though it's this traditional dish that has been in your past, yes. um, that you've seen from afar and like you might have been intimidated by it, the second you personalize it, the second you Top it with something that you know that you love. The second you stuff something yeah. that your daughter is going to like, just like freak out about. You've made, taken this spiritual holy bread, which is so important, right? Just generations, and you've made it special to you, which is so hard to do in so many things in Judaism, so many things, yeah. especially in Orthodoxy, you just do because you're that's what you do. It's not, you know, but right. then when you literally, you can literally eat <laughs> your word. Yes. You can literally eat the. The happy feelings, which is just the best, right? Full of hearts. Oh, <laughs> so all the fun things that you can do with that. It's it's always for me every time. It's always like, yes. Andy, I love that. You know, I never heard the past, present, and future, and I feel like that is so well. I hope that I'll be able to steal that from you and share that with people, and I hope that I'll remember to say it in your name and that I learned it from you because I think it's so profound. Obviously, someone who likes to cook and bake. You know, you're making arancini, as you mentioned. Um, is making challah different than everything else? Or do you make any other breads? And like, what is what if at all is different about making challah? Well, um, so the connection for challah for me obviously is very different. Um, it's now it's so weird to me to be comfortable with challah. Like challah is my comfort food. Like if I want to try something new, if I'm going to make challah bread yeah. sticks, or I'm going to make a, a fun challah shape, or if I'm going to make a fun, this is all going to be. Um, I'm relaxed about it. But so that is like, I like to make babka <laughs> because salad yeah. and babka are like, okay, that's the next one. But then because they, they kind of rhyme and they're also, yeah, <laughs> they're sort I of the, okay, that's like the next step. The fruity yeah. pebble babka that is a thing now and it's delightful. Yeah. Um, yeah. but but then it's like, oh, so that's like always special. But then it's like, when I try something new, it's always has, I guess, I got spoiled from salad, so I always feel like it has to have something like meaningful to me. Oh, there's me. Yeah. Although she's so she's so big now. Um, wow, that, wow. I a challah for her birthday, so I made her a red velvet challah. And that wow. was her really? first thing that got published. That was so cute. Do you ever feel like you're gonna run out of ideas? Are you ever like, what am I gonna do next? Or are the ideas flowing faster than you can make them? I actually like write them all down, you know, like they pop into my head. And then sometimes if I'm lucky enough to have an opportunity to speak with someone new or showcase recipes, then I always try and think about what would be a, like um, a great, like, like how, what would your favorite challah be? Like whoever you're talking yeah. to would be a wonderful challah for them. They would feel a connection to. So those, when you start thinking about those sorts of connections, you're able to come up with more flavors. I do have some sort of like weird encyclopedia of challah. Like one day I will, Somehow I would be like be brave enough to make a cookbook, you know, it was like all the challahs in the universe, yes. encyclopedia of challahs, but in, yeah. I love it. It makes, it's, it's, it's like the, I'm not an artist. Well, you're almost at 365 days of challah. Like you've made over 300. So you really could do a challah a day keeps the doctor away or something like what? that, you know? That's very, and then you combine it with like, you know, it's like yoga. <laughs> well, pilates. Yeah, pilates. Yeah, and every day. Tied in together, you'll get a package. You'll get all 365 days of salah. You'll get your 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 Pilates workout. It'll be great. Yeah. Oh, oh, that looks so yum. Stuffed, braided, drizzled. Mm -hmm. um, is the action of baking is that like somehow peaceful? Is that a happy place for you? Are you relaxed when you bake? Like, just talk to me a little bit. A lot of like have been made about sort of baking therapy over this past, you know, last year that we went through. What's it like for you? It's, I. It's because you're, I'm always baking for other people. But I also always like when I would have sh um, Shabbat guests, that would be like my most like try new recipes, try new flavors. This past year, yeah. unfortunately, we haven't been able to have. We haven't had company. For Shabbat in a year, so it's like it's like I was worried. I'm like, am I just going to stop baking? What am I going to do? Um, and then it's I realized that 
the most important inspiration, the most important people to make happy are the ones that are around me. So I wanted to make, so it does bring me, when I'm able to make something that I know something in my family likes, it's um, amazing. Actually, these last few weeks, <laughs> like, and I think since December, we, um, my daughter has like an, an app on her phone that there's a wheel and we put a letter of the alphabet in each of the little wedges and we spin the wheel and every week it lands on a different letter and that is the letter for Shabbat, the Friday night meal that we make. So that was like my inspiration for that. So then I like, right. it was like the most fun. It was like D week was dumplings and drumsticks. And last week was D week. So we had like very, it, that was a hard one. It was like very <laughs> vegetable soup and um, like the Dahlia onion chicken. But these sorts of like having like so fun. Fun. So that for me, even though it's just for the four of us and my kids eat like, yeah. like but it's still like that right there. My, even if, like cooking for nobody, I found it that, to be like even more happy because it's I've made it like all the kids like they join in. <laughs> it's like this whole yes. together thing. So the alphabet Shabbat has been a big hit for this. So nice, man. He's so nice. Um, my last question for you is why do we think that food, kala, but beyond kala, food has such a power to make people so happy? Why is it so comforting? Why does it mean so much when someone makes for you, you know, makes something for you? I just think it's so, so, so powerful. And I'd love to explore like your thoughts on why you think this. You know, you can give anyone a present, but yeah. what is it about food that's like a piece of your soul on a plate, you know, <laughs> it's if you will. No, no, no. It's similar to someone painting you um, a piece of art or someone who is, um, who writes you a poem, which one day Danny will write you a poem. It'll be very romantic. But oh, Danny, was, we're waiting on that. You make sure you post about that happen. But these, mm -hmm. some, anything that you've taken time out of your day to, for someone else is amazing. And when you're like, and, but that's, even paintings and art and um, poetry, those are those will like soothe other parts of you, make your heart feel loved. But your heart and your tummy, <laughs> they're very close to each other, right? Yes. And, Closer for you than me, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They're like you know, an inch apart. Yes, yes. But um, they are all those things together make like it's like you're getting like a wham wham. Like your heart feels happy, your tummy yes. feels happy, knowing that someone takes care of you. And then if you if people, it's this, it's a sense, it's all your senses, right? So it's like yeah. you smell. If you smell the food, it reminds you of something. If you taste it, it feels, and you feel nurtured. Everyone wants to feel nurtured. Everyone, I don't care, you know yeah. how old you are. Feeling being taken care of, feeling someone cares enough about you to take care of you. Yes. It, right. It is the most, I think you just hit the nail on the head. I think that that's the most profound feeling. And that's why there's such a special relationship between mother and child or parent and child. And when someone feels that from somebody else, it is, it's soul stirring. It really, really is. So Mandy, you are such a burst of joy. You're such a love. You are so creative. Um, the saddest part about this is that we are not breaking bread together. Um, so God willing, I don't know if the skies are going to open and what's going to happen, but if you have a chance to come to Israel to do a belated bar mitzvah celebration, we must, must please get together. And uh, I'd love to be able to meet you in person after admiring you for so long online. So thank you for taking the time and making 800 challah so that we could see every step of the way. And I hope everyone enjoys it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you guys can follow Manzi on Instagram at Manzi Lush's challah. She gives challah classes. She answers all the DMs. Manny, just one chance to say goodbye to everyone before we wrap up the show. So oh. we'll bring you on full screen. Please go ahead. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. This has been wonderful. And thank you for encouraging me to think about other challah things that besides, you know, um, brisket and molten chocolate fudge and, you know, all the other things. But this is, it helps remind me about how wonderful this has been, this whole experience with challah. And this was just a delight. So thank you very much. It was. It sure. was, Mandy. It was such a pleasure. And I feel like forever connected now because I feel that you, even though I can't eat it, I feel you made this challah exclusively for us. And so I, I have that feeling you've made us happy. So thank you, Mandy. Thanks for coming on Feed Your Soul. Thank you so much. This was Okay, guys, wow, that was such an amazing episode. Um, I love that all of Mandy's friends and family came out to watch this. You know, I said that I would talk a little bit about the situation here uh, at the end. Let me know if you wanna hear about it, what you guys are thinking. It, it's been a challenging last 15 months, last month, last few weeks, and then basically the, uh, the hate that's happening, the anti-Semitism across the world in cities in America and worldwide and also happening online has really, really um, been challenging, upsetting, appalling, unbelievable, unbelievable. And I have to say 
that almost the barrage of of um, social media hate, it's not as surprising to me as someone who's been, uh, had a career online for well over a decade, probably going on 13 years now. Um, I've had to deal with hate before with anti-Semitism online. Hate online is such an easy place for people to be hateful, um, for people to be um, violent, horrific comments. It's, it's so easy to hide. But this, I think the physical violence on the streets has been, that's been the hardest thing to see. Um, and to understand that in this day and age that this is happening and and happening so much, it's, it's unbelievable. So this show, Feed Your Soul, is a place of, of love, of peace, of unity. It's a place where we come together and we talk about food, which is such a unifier. Always talk about it. Please always leave in the comments who you'd like us to bring on the show. We've got some major guests, and then I'm not totally confirmed, so I'm not totally confirmed, but like big, big names coming on. Um, we interview everyone on the show, Jewish, not Jewish, um, making food that can help bring us together in, in a warm, respectful conversation. We actually started a clubhouse room. If any of you guys are on clubhouse on Tuesdays, Aish has a club on clubhouse. And yesterday we spoke about anti-Semitism, hide or pride on the club with our clubhouse rabbi, Rabbi Ari, and also our director of public relations, Rachel Moore. And we had people of all faiths coming up on the stage and talking. And as long as the discourse is about learning, educating, um, striving for peace, for unity, and for respect, respectful discourse, it's unbelievable, it's so powerful. And so let's use our words, um, let's be positive, let's use them for the good, let's use our power behind the screen and behind the keyboard um, to share love. And I hope to see you on another episode of Feed Your Soul by Aish. Please make sure that you're following us. Hi there, Ida in Miami, how are you? Following us all over on social media. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. If you're watching this on Facebook, please follow us. If you're on Instagram, if you're on TikTok, uh, you're on Clubhouse, follow us. Um, we love creating incredible programming that brings us together. Lyndon in Albuquerque, a pleasure to hear from you. Hey there in Oklahoma. My Tammy, hi in Oklahoma. Uh, thank you. Oh, Melinda, thank you so much. In the UK, it's beautiful to connect with you from all over. Brazil again, hi there, B BD or B, thank you. I, don't, I hate to say the name's wrong, but it means so much to me that you guys are there. Hi there, Irid in Rehovot. It's so good to see you. And please tune into the show. We are here on, what's today? Wednesdays. <laughs> Rona, thanks for enjoying the show. And we'll be back, God willing, next week. Mommy, we love you. Shalom. My mom is right. It's all about unity and respect. Respect. We can, we can have disagreements. We can have different, agree, different agreements on policies and politics, whatever. But it's about respectful discourse. So that's my mommy. We're going to end it on you, mommy. Shalom. Love you, mama. And bye, everyone.